what's in your going mind, on. You are selfish, and you're thinking about another pair of shoes that are a different colorway than the three you got already. And God was trying to work into you His character, and instead you left your common tip what they deserve. When God was trying to strip you through generosity, not in church, He was trying to teach you how to worship. What I'm asking the church it's hot. to do is to worship the God who performs miracles. Now, 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 that's important that I say it like that is because most of us believe that God can do great things. He just probably won't do them for us. Okay. The truth of the matter is many of us do not believe that the things that happened in the Bible can actually happen today. They are historical stories that are somewhere between Narnia and... You, you think it's an episode of Bridgerton or something. You have more faith in a made-up story. than factual, scientific evidence. But for some reason, we believe... The things that happened back then were from back then, and I came to say today that, that we still serve the God who does miracles, signs, and wonders in 2023. Okay. So, so, so as we released the song "Miracles," I was like, "All right, I'm gonna preach a miracle, a song, a, a, a message of miracles, signs, and wonders." God, I need you to show me the formula for miracles. I'm going to give the people the formula so they never can ever forget again to not believe. This time, sometimes I pray because I'll be wanting it so bad for y'all. I'm going to be like, I understand the miracles. I've seen miracles. But how do I export the faith to believe for miracles into somebody who is depressed and hurting? This is how I just be going, but God, I'm just showing y'all right now. Lord, give me the formula. And when I was praying about this, started to look at the 37 recorded miracles of Jesus in the New Testament. And I started to look at, dang, Jesus was just waking up in the morning and he wow, healed. What? Wow, healed. Hello, my name is Jesus. Wow, healed. Like, it was like he was on a rampage like of healing. He said, I only got three years to prove to y'all that I am the Son of God. So how am I going to do this? Should I hold seminars? Should, should, should I build the building? No, I'm going to just go through my regular life transforming people's situations in front of other people. I'm just going to heal the person who was mean, mad, and crippled. I'm going to walk up and say, be healed. And, they, and then I'm going to walk off. And they're going to be like, no. Hold on, he, hold on, he got to be the son of God. Because we know who I'm. And Jerome is the worst of the worst, jacked up, liar, cheater, heartbreaker, like the whole thing. He's transformed. And from town to town, Jesus would do miracles in people's lives. And that's how the gospel did begin to spread. He healed blind Bartimaeus. The crippled man that, that, that was lured by three of his friends into the house in front of Jesus and Jesus sealed that man. He walked up out of there with the mouth. He laid on to see Jesus. Demon-possessed boy. Feeding of the 5,000. All of these miracles I'm going through and my faith is being shown. I'm like, okay, God, you're going to show me in the Word a formula to give to your people so that they can believe for me. And then the Holy Spirit stopped me. He said, Michael, I can't give you a formula. And I said, God, why should you give me a formula? Because that's how people learn. Two plus two equals. We didn't all go to the same school, but because that formula works, we all know it. So give me a formula. He said, I can't. Because if I give you a formula, watch this. This is the title of my message. It takes the mystery out of the world. Today I want to teach you the mystery of a miracle. See, it's not a miracle if there is not a mysterious part of it. It can't be a miracle if you can explain it. So now, with that definition, some of the things we're believing for aren't miracles that we need to plan 
that we need. Some of the stuff you're like, I need God to make a miracle. No, you need to start saving money and stop eating out. We don't need a miracle to budget. You need discipline. Okay, well, uh, some people are believing God to need a miracle in this area. He said, no, you need accountability in that area. You need accountability right there. The miracle requires something that no one else can do. A miracle has an element of mystery that only God can step into. And so the problem with giving a formula is that if I give you a formula, it will take out faith. If it was guaranteed every time that if I stood like this, bit like this, prayed like this, saying good, good, father, and turn three times in a circle, God would do a miracle. Everybody would be like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. that's what it would. That's what church service would. And it would not take faith because we would have a plan. And God said, I'm not doing it the same way I did it because if I did it the same way that I did it back there, you wouldn't need faith to believe me. The reason that the miracle cannot have a formula is because the miracle requires faith. If we get a prescription for a miracle, it will take away his faith. If we would put it in a system, it would take out his spirit. So many of us are believing for a miracle. And God's saying, I give you a miracle, but you have to embrace the mystery. You're going to have to be okay with the tension. Like me saying, do this and you don't get it. Later. Don't hear that. What's the mystery? Don't talk to that person. I don't know it. Embrace. You will not see the miracle on the other side of the mystery if you do not obey the instructions that don't make sense. I believe in more miracle. I'm embracing the mystery of God. How is God going to do it? I have no freaking idea. God forgives. This has got to be that clear, y'all. What are you praising God for? The breakthrough he's going to do. What is he going to do? I have no idea. How is he going to do it? No clue. Where is he going to do it? I'm waiting to find out as well. But I am wrapping my whole faith around the fact that the character of God is that he has stood for me. And there is something on the other side of me embracing the myth I don't get it. Why am I in trouble? Why the heck am I a pastor? Why, why, why did you give me a son, the crazy faith God, with all to? I have to embrace the mystery of a God whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts. As even as high as the heavens are compared to the earth, he says, my stuff, the way I'm thinking about this, the whole way I got this thing written up, is so far from the way you think it's about to happen. So instead of trying to figure it out, you need to trust and have Okay. Who I feel this thing. I, I came to encourage you. What God's about to do, has to, there has to be an element that... Benigo, what are you going through? What are you going through, Benny? The level of miracle that God's about to do in my life has to have an element that nobody gets. How in the heck did I get to this arena if nobody understands it because it was a miracle? And God is saying, I Tell need to, my to believe that there are doors that only I can. Only I can open. That there are Things that only I have for them. There are mysteries and treasures and ideas and things, but it is not going to be what man thinks it's going to be. Why? Because if man does it, man wants credit. Okay. So if man can explain it, then man gets it. Explain. Credit. And the whole purpose of, of, of us having faith in God is so that He can be exalted. So write this one down. Every miracle requires.
requires mystery so God can be magnified. This next season of my life, the reason I'm just standing in crazy faith and embracing anything that God tells me to do in the face of adversity, in the face of comments, in the face of whatever, is because when God does it, When he stands up strong and says, I've been with him the whole time. It won't be because I did something great. It will give God all the glory. He will be magnified. Deuteronomy 29, 29. It tells us that the secret things or the, the secret things are the belong mysteries. to the Lord. Belong. There are mysteries that God is saying, boy, if they only knew what I had planned for them. They they sad because they're 30 and not in a marriage yet. <laughs> if they would just embrace this next two years and really get healed ooh, and really dive into their, their purpose with me, they're going to look up and every year that the caper worm thought he stole from them, I will restore back to them. You imagine they've been married 10 years. They've been unhappily married for 10 years. But what you're about to have because you do the work on the inside of you. Y'all don't hear me. You better embrace the mystery of God. We want to talk miracles, then we got to talk mystery. This is not about what I can plan. I don't want my plan. I want his mysteries to actually be manifested in my life. I'm talking too big for something like that. But the Bible tells us that the mysteries belong to the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. Can I break that down? There's a mystery I missed that, that God wants to bring a miracle in your life. But after it manifests as a miracle in your life, it's no longer a mystery. Mr. Reed. So now you have revealed truth of what God wanted to do. And Mr. now Reed. you can pass that miracle is the to pain. your children and your children. The truth of the matter is most of our forefathers and parents oh. did not walk in miracles, so they left us in behavior. You don't know how to believe God because you never saw the people before you believe God and walk in miracles. I am grateful for parents who believe God. And this is what I'm telling you. If you didn't have them, you come up. Y'all miss it. So many times we take the victim card. That's why I'm jacked on right now because I ain't have a dollar and a lot. Let's believe God for a miracle that He can restore everything that has been broken. But if you didn't have them, become them. Be the ones who start a lineage of people who believe God for miracles. Miracle. Let me keep moving. Okay. So, so God wants I the mysteries to be revealed in life. But hey, God he 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 Somebody shout at me real quick, miracles. Y'all didn't shout it with faith. Say miracles. Okay, question. If someone's baking a cake, what is the foundational ingredient that you need for cake? Foundation of flour. Everybody, right, don't matter what cake it is, you need flour. Bake a week. Well, when you believe in God for a miracle, Bake a week. the key ingredient that you need, the foundational, no matter if it's carrot cake or... Uh, uh, Pound cake or oh Jesus. Uh, red velvet. That we need to take that for service. The foundational ingredient is flat. Any miracle you're believing God. No matter if it's salvation for a loved one, healing for your yeah. loved one. No matter if it is forgiveness from past sins that you commit, you haven't forgiven yourself. Okay, okay, let's talk big now. Whatever the foundational ingredient is, watch this. Faith. And so many people are believing Benny. for miracles Benny. without the Benny. faith. So Benny, today, baby. we're going to believe God for miracles. Benny, baby. We're going to have a night of miracles. Benny, miracles baby. don't happen without the Benny, ingredient baby. of faith. It's kind of like Big Mama cooking the recipe. And what I found, like people before like 1980, they didn't write nothing down. I don't know how they knew exactly what they was doing, but they didn't put nothing me? down. Like, why the hell are you biting me? But, but why they, are you biting me? Why are you biting me? 
of how all of they just have Oh, you see the glove. You think I'm trying to fight you. And the more you, you have flashbacks of the glove, huh? The more you, you have flashbacks of the glove, huh? You think I'm putting the gloves on to fight you. No, I'm not. I don't want to fight you, Benny. I don't want to fight you, Benny. I need a little more faith. I don't want to fight you, Benny. I don't want to fight you, Benny. Yeah. Don't put your pessimistic perspective on this. I believe in God for something that's got to. Got to strike. Now, I need my expectations to rise. I need God to do something. Go, oh, baby. It takes the pieces of our life, the pieces of our situation, the piece, and it puts it. mess it up my angles. Uh, um, uh, well, let me tell you something. Yesterday, because I want you to get it, but I, I, I just saw a way that you could see it. Yesterday was my youngest daughter's birthday. She was turning two years old yesterday. That's Daddy's baby birthday. We call it a joy baby. So one of the things that my wife has an issue with is um, buying too many toys for our two-year-olds. <laughs> and um, one of my responsibilities is to put together stuff that she buys. Fathers, stay Fathers. strong. Because some of these contraptions seem like they are designed by the devil. Now, if you've never done this before, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But it looks like it's something that comes with a million and fifty little pieces. And what they really could have done is put it together for us and put it in a box that would have been fine for our children to enjoy. But no. What do they do? Break it down into a bunch of million pieces and then call us to have an argument with my wife about, no, this seems personal, I need counseling. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, he got something to and, and uh, what are you doing? What are you going through? What's he going through? Assembly. What's he going through? Look what? What are you going through? What are you going through, Billy? And, 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 and I, I started to think about what are you going through? all of the pieces that were in that box. And all of the pieces. All the puzzles. Put them together. I need to catch Benny in that. So I'm. I'm y'all, y'all ain't gonna see my workout because I'm about to prop the camera up. To catch Benables in the act. Benables is doing some crazy, some nonsense. I'm gonna catch him in the act. Act of what he doing. So I'm prop up the camera. Yeah, we're gonna catch Benables. We're gonna catch Benables. We're gonna catch Benables in the act of his crazy stuff, his crazy shenanigans. Hopefully, I can catch him. Hopefully, I can catch him. His shenanigans.
came to let you know you could have been disappointed in the past and you can still have big faith right now. And somebody's faith needs to be sparked again. I believed and it didn't work out like I thought it was. I believed and it still left my life. I believed and God was giving me a different instruction that I didn't understand. But, but now, mouth, mouth full of gold. I'm coming to encourage somebody that your faith right now is the thing that's going to change your life. Your faith right now is the thing that's going to change the generational patterns in your life. Somebody shout at me now, say. Believe again. Mouth, mouth, full of gold. Oh, 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 oh. That's a whole word for somebody. Believe again. Try again. Hold on. Try for the first time. Your mama used to have faith, but you never actually stepped out on faith. Your daddy was a person of prayer, but you never actually used your faith. And God said, when's the time? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things I say, but oh, this is the H word. See, 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 even if it didn't happen last time, the reason that I have to teach this message, the thing you were believing for wasn't the thing you were robbed of. When it didn't happen last time, the thing you were believing for was not the thing that you were robbed of. What did I do, my blood? Because he robbed you of hope. I don't know what I did with my blood. Dang, that is nasty. He wasn't after mm. the miracle. What did I do with my blood? He was after your hope. Because if you stop hoping, you take away the gas of faith. You missed it. Because faith is the substance of things. So if you don't hope, you can't have faith. And most of us do not have faith because you stop hoping the marriage will work. You just stop hoping you would lose weight. This one man, I mean, they love me. Love me, how I am, where I am. All that. No, 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 it's just because the last time you had, you had a bad trainer and they discouraged you and it was the life, the life circumstances converged with your, your insecurity and it didn't work the last time. And the enemy did not rob you of hell, he robbed you of hope. So now it's been 15 years and you stopped hoping to be healed. You stopped hoping to use the gift that God put on the Faith inside. Mouth, mouth you went to that one church that one time and they made fun of you because you couldn't say my fibber chef. And now, stop talking about real stuff. You couldn't say my fibber chef and they were actually jealous of the gift that was in you unrefined. And so they discouraged you to the point that you didn't lose speaking engagement, you lost hope. And now you're in here, and we're talking about miracles, and you can't even get revved up at all. Because for miracles to happen, the foundational ingredient is faith. But to have faith, you must first hope. All I came to let everybody know is hoping is helpful. You can hope when you wake up in the morning that today is going to be a good day. I know the last 62 have been hopeful, but mm, Father, I feel your grace and your mercy. They follow me, follow me. I thank you that today, that I hope, I hope today I don't cuss people out. Y'all don't even hope no more. I hope today my anger doesn't get the best of me. I hope today I walk in integrity. The reason that you can't, you even got no bumpers. Like, ain't nothing even stopping you from what you don't even want to do because you stopped hoping. You want a miracle? I'll start with hope. I hope this year is the last year I'm in financial pressure. Have you even to, no, you're begging for something you should be hoping for. Lord, please. Like, that doesn't take any amount of expectation that something is going to change. Somebody say hope again. Say it again, hope again. Now faith is the substance of things. What? Hope for. Hope for. In the world, world Big mouth, mouth, mouth full of goals. Ideas like the glasses have in them. People think of the world going to hell in the handbasket. Pessimistic perspective everywhere. You need to become what the Bible says is a prisoner of <laughs> I'm going to be chained to anything. I'm going to be chained to hope. Today might be the day. 
I'm coming to get you. This might I'm coming to get you.
The universe, you know what I'm saying, brings the things that we need when we need them to be able to. Why is it the most undeep people try to get the most deep? Like, you know, because we're from the earth, the dirt, the sky, the moon, the birds. <laughs> and they really be like. But at some point, the miracle you walk in becomes the message you can teach. I, what, what I'm saying to you is maybe it would be more important that you become the miracle than trying to explain how you're going to see the miracle. Okay. Okay. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. Okay. So, so if, if, if the miracle signs and wonders are attached to our belief, something I've realized, write this down, miracles don't take massive. Miracles take a moment. I just need to help people because people see me and they go, you are like crazy. You say, I'm fucking crazy. Think 24 seconds. Oh, y'all don't want me to be real. I don't, I don't walk around like, yes. Today, God is going to heal MJ today. There are days that I look up. Y'all see? Y'all 
Let's see. Let's show them again. Let's show them again. Betty, climb like a mountain goat. Climb like a mountain goat. The motions. How you can you? You Betty, climb like a mountain goat. Climb like a mountain goat. I got the tree trees up here. But there was no yeah, tree trees up there. Cause there was some man was like, this, this ain't gonna really work. In Jesus' name. And while we laughing, that's how a lot of us do. Let's pray. Make sure you have oxycontin on deck. You better climb like a mountain go. They waiting on you. They waiting on you. Don't really believe you better climb like a mountain go. They waiting on you. The Bible says two or three can touch you, but you don't really believe it. So it's like, get the oxycontin. And God wants you medicine. Do you want to do medicine? But did you hear really try to believe for it? Yeah. Just pray yeah. don't mean you believe yeah. that it's going to work. Yeah. There's so many people who pray with unbelief yeah. every day. It's a witch yeah. 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 There is no revelation yeah. in the place. Yeah. And so, yeah. I'm yeah. challenging yeah. us as a church. Yeah. We really believe. He said, yeah. 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 not because y'all can cast a witch. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't believe it could happen. So I am truly saying to you, if you have faith, Then we start saying that your will be done. Hold on, come on. Let's get some specificity in here. I suppose it's just your will. God's saying my will considers your words. And I need y'all to hear me say this. God chooses not to do anything on earth without the participation of his children. And, and, and so why I'm trying to get you to believe God for miracles it's because your miracle may be in your mouth. Oh my God. The reason the enemy has had you so discouraged is because when you don't hope for something, you won't even say it out of your mouth. Yeah. There are things that yeah, you yeah. need that are in yeah, somebody yeah. else's hand. They don't know you need it because you're not even hoping for it and you won't even release it out of your mouth. Thanks. The miracle Thanks. is not a far off. It just needs to be identified so that somebody that may have the support. Okay. You remember when I was talking about half faith? Me and Adam got to a point in our, in our journey in jail where we were stuck. We didn't know where he was going to go to school. The guy we set them in public school because of the peace. We didn't know what was going on. And Gangsta. the Holy Spirit told me to go to this Maverick City concert. Gangsta. We went to the Maverick City concert here at Gangsta. Chan saw me and was stop and he was like, Will you come Gangsta. to the at some point? And I was like, How are you feeling at that point? I said, Hey, no. Gangsta. Gangsta. I do not want to pray. Can I Magic City. Just because I'm a pastor, me and that had 
been crying and arguing early. That and King co- she didn't want to come to the concert. I didn't want to come to the concert. But the Holy Spirit said, go to the concert. Then we try to sit in the back and have Pastor John come to the front. I didn't want to sit in the front. I, I wanted to sneak in the back. And I wanted to be not me. I didn't want to be the person of faith. I wanted to pattern. Can I be honest? I'm like, this is not freaking fair. You don't do all this stuff. And then somebody who remember a moment of faith I had said, what's up, Mary? God no, come up and pray. Thanks, Shannon Moore. And then I came up. Who are you? And because I'm authentic, I had to share where I was at. I said, today I'm, I'm hurting. I'm frustrated. My wife is on the front row crying. Because we're believing God in faith. Well, just me doing that in the moment, I had no clue that the young lady who had a master's degree in, in special education came in the door five minutes before, an hour after the concert had started, and sat in the back. And the Holy Spirit had already been telling her that she was supposed to quit her job and come and serve our family by helping MJ progress. I'm up there mad, and God's working a miracle. I'm up there a mess. But God's working a miracle. I'm about to shout. I'm up there misunderstanding the sovereignty of God. And he's working a miracle. That young lady said that was the moment she knew she was supposed to quit the job. She went and put in her two weeks notice, having not even talked to us yet. I know what God said. That girl came into our house and started working with my son. Within three weeks, he was puppy trained. After six years of peeing and pooping on himself, for you, I'm gonna tell you a real testimony today. I'm talking about the baby can spell yellow, blue, red. He can count money now. I get somebody to shout with me for a miracle. It's a miracle. Shout at me, miracle. We're still in the middle of it. Now watch. I want you to see. Miracle is not finished. A miracle is what I need to the next step to a miracle. And that's why the enemy would love to rob you right now of hope. Because so many of us have made so many steps forward in faith. We've made so many steps. But if we stop here. If we quit here, I'm a gangster. If we give up here gangster. on our journey, gangster, 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 gangster. If we stop here <laughs> on our process, if we stop here, we miss out on the fulfillment gangster. of the promises of God. Gangster, gangster, what a gangster! 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 Is not enough. But just one touch is more than enough for a big And touching Jesus can change everything. It may make you the woman in Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Let me read it to you, and then we'll go home. A woman in the crowd has suffered for a <laughs> She had suffered a great deal for many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay for, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and she touched his robe. I did life all suck. To herself. I did life all suck. Touch his robe. I will be here. Immediately. The bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed. Uh, see, I see. Uh, now I'm not flexing because I think I'm big. I know these arms is flat. Uh, they're toned nice and they're small, and they're small. I'm flexing because this bicep. So we turned around in the crowd, and this one's way bigger, and this one is way smaller. So I try to use both of my arms because I use this arm way more than I use this arm. So I try to flex this both of them off and on, off and on through the, throughout the day, every day. So this bicep can get as big as this bicep. 
came up and fell on her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her daughter, your faith. And that's because I use this arm way more than I your use what? my left arm. Not your facts. 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 Not what all the doctors told you. Not your Kill it in Manila. Kill it in Manila. Your faith has faith. made you wait. Thank God. Not even touching me. I still be breathing. He didn't say your touch. And even though it's hard. Your faith has that's made who you I wait. believe it. Now go in peace. <coughs> your do the grieve and the mass and the seed. Oh, Who do you believe in? The reason in? for the miracle is that you suffer. Keep my faith in God. I'll be free. Okay. So, 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 remember I'm talking about the mystery of the miracle. So, so let me give you just three things. Right this is what this believe woman had the mindset of The grieve and the mass and the seed. She had expectation and watch this word, anticipation. These are two words that you need for the miracle. The mindset. Can I show it to you in Mark 5, 28? For she thought to herself. Mindset. She's sitting there bleeding. Jesus coming to town. Jesus Jesus. Who's coming? You talking about the man who heals people? When he will be here? Today? Okay. She's not with the crowd of people. She said, hmm. What if I get close enough to the one that called healer not to have even a conversation? If he is who they say he is, all I have to do is touch what's touching him. All I have to do is get close enough to touch the him of she thought it. Who do you believe in? I keep my faith in God. I'll be breathing. Definitely we're busy when it, you know, everybody. Wait, hold up. DQ put fries and onion rings in a chicken strip basket? Definitely we're busy when they, you know, everybody everybody got their own lives. So whenever they had time, they came up and visited and supported. But me, I, I was visiting her every day. At that point, I was like, this is more important. I need to focus on my wife. And I just visited her every day. And she used to tell me, like, yo, you can't do this. You got to focus on your career. And I was like, yo, I don't care about that. So everything just got worse for me at that time. Like, my whole world came crashing then. Wow. I haven't heard this part of the story before. Oh, yeah, man. I hit rock yeah. bottom around that time, man. Like, it was it was real bad. You know what I'm saying? But I, I knew that she needed me, so I really didn't care about nothing that was going on with me. I was in a free world. So, Remy Ma and Papoose ended their marriage, adding their names to the list of Hollywood celebrities who have broken up this month. When Remy Ma was caught cheating on Papoose with a little man, the fans are even dragging Remy across social media and accusing her of using Papoose when he has been nothing but supportive to her. What makes this case even wilder is the fact that Papoose and Remy have been together for about 15 years now, and everybody thought that things were solid between them. He even stuck with her when she was in prison for an entire six years. Since in July of 2007, Remy was apprehended following an incident at a Manhattan nightclub where Makita Barnes Joseph was shot. She was convicted on charges related to assault, possession of weapons, and attempted coercion. On May 13, 2008, she received an eight-year prison sentence. Remy consistently said that the shooting was unintentional. Papoose stood with her all the way, and he was never caught cheating on her or even talking to other women while she was behind bars. He was the literal definition of ride or die, and he was even willing to marry her while she was in prison. But then he got caught trying to sneak her out of prison. He literally risked getting into legal trouble trouble for her. And if that's not love, then I don't know what is. He was then banned from seeing Remy for six months, so they ended up pushing the wedding further, but eventually exchanged vows over the phone. Remy, Remy and Papoose have been the ideal couple goals since then, because they're just so good together. They welcomed their daughter, Reminisce, together in 2018, and things have been great between them ever since. Papoose has always chosen to honor Remy, publicly saying, a man has to honor his queen if she disagrees with something. He has to take her perspective into consideration going forward. 
He can't just totally disregard her point of view. Happy life, happy life. Papusimus. It looks like things have changed now as they are currently in the middle of a Papusimus. cheating scandal because Remy is now getting exposed for cheating on Papoose. And, well, Remy is not denying it. Honestly, this is just sad because, as we all know, Papoose has always been nothing but loyal to Remy through thick and thin. People started to suspect that there was something wrong in the marriage a couple of months ago when Remy kind of stopped talking about Papoose on social media. But when she didn't post him for Father's Day on social media, it was somewhat of confirmation that something was up, since she has always been the type to celebrate bitch. at every chance she gets. So it was also weird when Papoose wished himself a happy Father's Day on Instagram. He posted a picture of himself with his kids, including the three he had before he got with Remy, and also captioned it, Family is everything. Remy was nowhere to be seen in the picture. It wasn't long after this that rumors started going around about how she was cheating on Pete Poos with rapper Easy the Block. The rumors sounded outrageous because Remy, Pete Poos, and Easy the Block have been doing business in the same circle for years. Easy himself even works for their business. So this just made the betrayal worse. Now, none of them exactly came out to address the situation, either to confirm or deny, but in Insiders revealed that there was a lot of tension between them. Things came to an end when it was reported that just like was Papoose. into a fight over Remy, and Papoose stopped his mouth according to an insider. Look, just like Papoose, but he had like Papoose with no freaking chance. Papoose and Easy getting real cozy, and he lost his cool and threw hands with Easy. Not that he knew about the process. Look, just like Papoose, but he had like Papoose with no freaking chance. Papoose and Easy getting real cozy, and he lost his cool and threw hands with Easy. Not that he knew about the process. She cheated on him with the same nigga she was fucking with. Saying, y'all want something bad to happen to me? So bad. Of course, it's the same thing on men and females, but y'all should get the story straight before you all speak. In another tweet, he said, I'm not mad about rumors. I'm not mad about false stories because being the person I am, I understand. But when I see people like Happy, it was a possibility. Something happened to me is unacceptable. And now I give two FS about nobody. We're not friends. And I finally get it. Easy was getting dragged so badly that he challenged Papusa to come out and deny the rumors, saying, real men do real things right. And Papusa only made your bold clear these rumors that before I do. Yeah, people were all up on him. The fans don't play about Remy and Papusa. Well, Papusa didn't address the rumors. But Remy kind of addressed the situation when she tweeted, I'd like to apologize to everyone that was disappointed tonight because we couldn't get three or four rounds from all the opponents. I tried. And can y'all please stop with the easy and pap lies? There's no place like Chrome right back at it. See you in August. Well, it turns out that she was flat out lying about that because she just got exposed. The drama got so spicy as Remy and Easy the Block went on a rap battle and they were facing rapper Geech Gotti. He spilled the real tea about her affair with Easy and he came for her hard. Gotti did not hold back. And that's how you know that the cheating rumors have been going around in their inner circle for months. And Gotti was just waiting for the perfect opportunity to expose Remy and Easy. The interesting part about this is that Easy didn't exactly deny the cheating allegations. In fact, he even seemed to accept it because this is what he said after Gotti dropped the bombshell. Yeah, things got a bit awkward when he admitted to sleeping with his friend's wife. We really need to bring back shaming cause this was just beyond foul. Now, the Remy Ma that we know would have lost her. Cool right there and then, dissing Geech Gotti for lying on her name and trying to break her marriage. But Remy was more of calm and dare I say, even looked scared. That's why people feel like Gotti was telling the truth. Things got even more suspicious when Remy had an interview after the rap battle and she still seemed calm. Oh, shoot. That Saying all of this to you. 
Yeah, there is something going on there because ain't no way that Remy would be that calm if they were dragging her name for nothing. She was also spotted out on a date with Easy recently, so it looks like things are getting quite heated between them. As expected, Papoose is shattered over Remy and Easy's betrayal because he never saw it coming. He feels humiliated by the drama and has been struggling to deal with his feelings. An insider added that he feels used by Remy and can't believe that she would do this to him. Right now, he is just minding his business and focusing on his work, but it's suggested that their marriage has been over for months and that Easy is Remy's main man now. They were going to wait a while to make everything official, but they got exposed at the rap battle. This situation has clearly stirred up a lot of emotions among fans, and their reactions have been quite vocal on social media. Many fans appear to be shocked and disappointed by Remy Ma's alleged actions, as expressed through comments like, Papoose held Remy down her whole bid, all for her to come home and cheat on him with somebody that got beekeeper teeth. And not Remy Ma cheating on Papoose for an ugly version is the year of cheats I see, and they stay choosing the worst versions. L-O-L terrible. The comment. Yeah. I talked about yeah, Remy Ma ugly, terribly bro. last night. Yeah. Everyone would cheat, but Papoose, the first they man look in alike. history to hold they a woman down in jail. And that's how that she does. Dude, a historian, no one reflects a sense of betrayal and disappointment in the context of Papoose's unwavering support during Remy Ma's time in jail. Yeah, they Regarding they whether Papoose has the right to be upset or angry about the situation, it's a subjective matter and can vary from person to person. Relationships are complex, and infidelity can be hurtful regardless of the circumstance. Papoose, as a partner who stood by Remy Ma during her incarceration, might understandably feel hurt and humiliated if the allegations of cheating are true. How he chooses to address this situation and the emotions he experiences are personal matters, and it's not uncommon for individuals to have strong reactions when faced with such challenges in a relationship. Ultimately, people's opinions on this drama will differ based on their perspectives and values. It's essential for the involved parties to communicate openly and work through their issues to find a resolution that suits their relationship. So so what do you think about this drama? Do you think that Papoose has the right to be this mad over the humiliation? Drop your thoughts in the comments, then check out this next video. Tacos to the chateau. Please, did somebody say? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay, bite me. Okay, bite me. I keep biting. We back, man. We got the oh, hottest yeah. mother on the internet. Charles the White. Charles the White. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell the nigga on earth right now. Uh, me, me and uh, the Russian president. Yeah, yeah. I say me and the Russian president. Fight. We the hottest two niggas on the country right now. Oh, you, you Don't mad? Ain't like you? <laughs> you mad? Ain't you keep fighting? Yeah, you know people. People get upset when I'm our interviews come to an end. Like I said in our last interview, because you know every day you upload new content. Are you mad? And uh, you know. People feel like when, because sometimes you don't upload. It, it, it's it's a few days out the month where you don't you upload mad? any content. Uh, People just, they, they thirst over it. They're addicted to it. Yeah, uh, you 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 give the internet a, a element of Charleston that that nobody gets, right? Uh, I can't give this on my on my platform. Uh, so yeah, you give you you give the audience. Uh, yeah, you tap into some homie that can't nobody get out of me. And so, you, you know, keep fighting. it's obvious. You want to keep fighting? Yeah. You ain't fast enough. I always wanted enough. to ask you. You ain't fast enough for me. You're, you're, you ain't fast enough Your format is a little me. different. Like, you go live. You don't post. You know, you, you see like Kim Yellow and all these other different bloggers. They post live. videos. But you go live. What, 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 you why my that, 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 uh, that roll out? Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a people's person. Uh, when, when, when I was in the boys' home, homie, in, in the youth facility, and when I used to go to lockup, uh, after so many days, uh, nigga, I want to talk to somebody. Yeah, I want to shake hands. But you can't do that because you're in isolation, right? So how else can you get human contact if you're isolated from people? You break the rules. You beat on the door. You disrespect the guard who come check the thing. You shake your, get the nerves. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So they're going to come in there and kick your ass. So as a kid... Uh, when I used to go to isolation, I mean, I used to beat on the doors and be disruptive and make them come in there and restrain me, howl, tie me, twist me up, make me holler, scream, and it hurt. But at least I'm getting some human contact and interaction. They talking to me. So uh, I'm a people's person, homie. I like engaging people. I can't engage them up camera. I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk to me enough. So I don't like pre record No, no, I like for a moment to say something. Uh, when I, I'm getting ready to do a comedy tour, homie, so my comedy tour go out, microphone stands in the crowd, so I'm going to say something to me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I like, I'm, I'm a people person. Nigga, don't put me by my motherfucking self. Hey! Yeah, I'm gonna holler. Shit, hell no. Is, is, it, is it lucrative? Oh. Uh, it's not lucrative uh, in terms of YouTube, right? Because YouTube pay more for pre-recorded, edited videos. So I, I'm not at, I'm not at. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast baked goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. You are looking at the real world yeah. of Houston University, bringing into action to provide personal support. It's just a media, but it shows that media our support is for you. Start now at Post University. Post. Our ties are friendly because I go live, right? I might say anything, I might fuck this, you know, so uh, I scare away a lot of advertising, but at the same time, I build and expand my <laughs> platform. Where I get to market myself off. Draw the white buddy. These people were driving through a nature reserve before they were stopped by an unexpected animal. Did they have it while reached out? What's the fear of the giraffe? Oh, yeah. The giraffe has spotted something in the kid's hands and it wants it. It sticks its neck into the car and manages to get some of the food before the kid is able to pull away directly in the direction of another incredibly aggressive animal. A zebra has now jumped on the Rob the Humans bandwagon and has forced its head directly into the car. What makes this encounter dangerous, albeit seemingly funny, is the fact that zebras can deliver quite a devastating bite. <laughs> Fortunately for these people, though, they managed to get out without pissing these animals off, for the most part. In this segment, a group of tourists are seen recording a tiger when out of nowhere, this happens. This is a very dangerous situation for them, as oh, many healthy tigers in India have been known to attack and hunt humans. After she, the first charge, they the proceed car? to speed up to keep distance between themselves and the predator trailing she got them out very the closely from behind. She got out of the car. Oh, he's the piece only lasts for a few minutes as the animal decides to show its true nature. Find what you love. Love what you find. Oh, he's talking about me. I'll eat one. I'm in my to outrun the animal with their vehicles, ending the nightmare. South America, a group of tourists on a boat, had their tour guide attempt to feed some hungry crocodiles when the unimaginable happened. After spotting the predators from the other side of the river, they decide to get a closer look and park the boat on the shore. Contrary to what most would do, the tour guide jumps in the water with a piece of chicken in his hands and tries to... I don't want that chicken, I don't want your meaty ass. I don't want that little piece of chicken, I want your meaty ass. <laughs> stupid motherfucker. Are you stupid? Yeah, I got this. He finally gets their attention and proceeds to bravely feed them from up close while the terrified drag tourists his ass are in forced water. to watch. Don't drag his ass up in that water. Wow, that's loud. Don't you? Turn his ass up. Now fearing Turn. for his safety, he jumps back on the boat, but still Want tries to, to continue to go the show. Your leg. Unfortunately, the lady recording isn't at all ready for what's about to happen. Let me see. Let me see. Eat it, then. Oh, 
What? Feeling like they've seen enough, the group decides to start up the boat again and leave the crocodiles alone before anyone gets hurt. Oh this man, that one guy introduced us his to chin. perhaps one of the most Bust underrated threats so in the African grasslands. An ostrich is chasing after this man and his vehicle, and perhaps shockingly enough, it's managing to keep up. You wanna be alone? You best stop. The ostrich bite attacks bite a strike bite. with its beak, but the man is prepared bite me, for it, slapping hey, the ostrich Why you bite side. me? Why you bite me? Hmm? Why you bite me? You feeling some type of way? You feeling some type of way? The men should be you thankful feeling some type that of they way? kept out of range of you the bird's powerful feet. Should I put your claws in there and bite me? You a feeling family some type watches a police officer play with way? a decently sized I, alligator who's trying to secure it and take it away from a residential area. I wish you would. I'll cut these cameras off. I'll cut these no, cameras off. I cut these cameras off, boy. You hear me? You hear me? You think I'll be recording? You can ask for. You think I'll be recording? You think I'll be recording the encounter and asking the officer fighting with the animal if he has done this trip? You think I'll be recording? 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 You think Alligator. Despite being fast, alligators Gator, man, are known to tire quickly, and that's why the officer takes advantage of this and gasses the animal out. Gas now man. able to handle the wild animal Gas with man. ease after tiring it out, Gas the man. officer then proceeds to do something extremely risky. Gas. Got the gas X. Got the gas X. Gas him out. Fortunately, the situation gets taken care of and no one gets hurt. These tourists have found themselves yes, face to face with a cape buffalo. Cape buffalo. Hey, hey. I won't deny it. I'm For those that think this animal poses no threat, I would suggest researching just why this juggernaut is referred to as the Black Death. Black death about to bust you with the horns. You could be forgiven for thinking that this beast wants pets, only in theory. The guide is leaning away from the buffalo, understanding full well that though this animal is curious for the moment, it could all change in an instant. <laughs> That horn will come around and hit you in the neck. To get closer to the driver, and he immediately realizes that it's time to leave. Black Death. That was a close call. Sparing lions and putting them horns right up in the line. At the beginning of this next clip, two hunters can be seen right up in. recording a large Ontario moose it's standing on the dirt too. road. Spur his ass, put a horn right up in. You feel me? Black defamation. Black defamation. They record the animal walking around the road, seemingly in awe of its large uh, body and antlers. These oh, dangerous dang, dang. and nervous animals can often reach weights of 800 pounds, which makes the following scenes more terrifying. The animal and the man stare at each other for a while, but when the hunter turns his back to end the encounter, this happens. Ten years shot. Ten years shot. Ten years shot. Oh, Lord. They're coming from him. They're coming from Shoot. He's surprised. Bless his ass. And some say, on a quiet hey. night, you can still hear his full QWERTY keyboard click clacking in these very woods. Click, clack, click, clack, clack, pixel. I'm scared. Oh, I'm sorry. That story was too No, no not boy. I'm scared about the future. What do you mean? Well, you've got this big launch coming up. You're going to be getting all kinds of attention. Did you hear that? 
What? No. Anyway, people are going to be talking about your groundbreaking AI features and your eye-catching design. Physically, notices right. in time. Which gives him time to react and grab his rifle. Luckily for him, the enemy retreats as soon as it sees him grabbing his gun. Near Green Harbor, Texas, YouTuber Jordan Armacost decided to bring his dog Arya on an exciting kayak trip. Little did he know, those waters were unfortunately infested with hungry alligators. While calmly paddling around the lake, the man immediately pulls his dog away from the ledge as he spots the head of an alligator poking out of the water, probably waiting for its chance to snatch poor Arya away. Arya, come here. Arya, come here. Come here. Why would you be in a small freaking kayak and alligator infested water? He attempts to leave the area but is once again forced to pull his dog back after seeing another gator head. You better stay down here, girl. Sit down. Sit down. Get out of that water. Why would you have your dog in a, in a small kayak? That small freaking kayak. Fearing for his that small freaking kayak. He turns the kayak Best around small freaking kayak. and paddles as fast as he can away from those dangerous predators. A small Kyle freaking kayak. Are you serious? That small freaking kayak. It's like he, it's got water coming in. While starring in a show in alligator game, running water. Wild what is with wrong with grills, a man named wrong? Joseph Gordon Levitt got the adventure of a lifetime after stumbling upon a huge crocodile at the wrong time. The show begins with Joseph and Bear Grylls running around the hot African canyon trying to navigate the rocky terrain as best they could. Well, Joseph got it left! And you've got to always be on the ball. <laughs> After going down a steep lift, they left. continue their journey, only to find a rotting buffalo fort near a body of murky water. However, what they discover in that water is even more terrifying. Maybe I'm saying things. Whoa. It's a decent sized crocodile. They proceed to take the buffalo from the crocodile to use for dinner later. Bear Grylls stealing the buffalo corpse while Joseph takes on crocodile duties. If the croc comes, push him away with that fork. He's also seeing his meal go away. He's not going to be that happy. Oh my god. Thankfully, Joseph managed to keep the that crocodile in the bay with his stuff, while Bear and Big Old took the Buffalo's tongue. head to scavenge what they could out of it. Jim, big Old Juicy Tongue cooked down the skirt. Ready to be equipped at the beginning muscle, of the baby. video as he's ready to catch the Buffalo. Gangs, 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 gangs. A few minutes of waiting later, his line <laughs> tugs, and he quickly gets gangs, to work gangs, 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 to haul in whatever he caught. Muscle with me. Muscle with me. Muscle with me. Muscle and meat. Muscle and meat. Kurt Franklin, Challenge Street. I don't know how I've never known about this. Like, <laughs> this is... How can we deliver energy to a world Fred, that can uh, Ongoing energy access is essential for people. Uh, I don't know how I've never known about this. Like, known. this is... Kurt Franklin, he got... One of the harshest rebukes that I've ever seen, like on the internet, in person, is I don't know if you've seen this before. This happened four years ago. This happened at a concert that Kirk Franklin was having. This street priest uh, preacher pulled up. He set up across the street. He preached against Kirk Franklin on a loudspeaker for over an hour, rebuking him, calling him evil, calling him the devil, rebuking the people who were walking into the venue. And then, I guess Kirk Franklin got fed up. He comes out. They have this face-to-face -face confrontation, which I'm about to show you. And then after that, something extremely interesting happened. I'm going to show you this video. Um, if you want to stick around to like the end of this video, I'm going to show you. They have a one-on-one -on -one sit-down. So it's Kirk Franklin. It's the street preacher. I don't know his name. I apologize. Um, and then Tony is, no. <laughs> is on a conference call. I don't know how I've never heard about this situation, but let's watch this 
and, 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 and break this down. Um, I'll link the full video down below. If y'all want to watch like the full length version of it, I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, let's just get into this. A day in your life. I love Jesus too because the audio is is low. All right, they don't have the best speakers and the best mics, obviously. So I turned it up as high as I possibly can. Um, but just sit through it. Your ears will get used to it. All right. I love Jesus. I love Jesus because my daddy loved Jesus. Guess what? God does not have grandkids. God does not have grandkids. He only has kids. Hold on. Let me speed it. Let me let me skip up a little bit. As a grand all day. Okay. You really love Jesus. He'll do His will every day. Jesus said, who is my mother, my brother, my sister? He said, he that does the will of my father. Oh, why aren't you doing God's will tonight? Don't you know Kirk Franklin's a false prophet, a false, I don't even call him a prophet. He doesn't even prophesy. All he does is he's a false diddy bop singing pop artist that tells you he loves Jesus. That's all he does is sing diddy bop songs that make you go, whoop, whoop. Do you want a revolution? Apparently not. You don't want a revolution. You know why? Because if you wanted a revolution, you'd read your Bible. Ooh. If you wanted a revolution, you would get on your knees before God and you'd start crying out for a revival. Mm. That's why true. are we not doing that? We want to come to a concert. We want to keep feeding the machine. I tell you the truth. This nation is full of adulterers. This nation is full of adulteresses. This nation is full of people that play hooky on God every single day. This nation is full of people that are denying Jesus Christ with their actions. The Bible says, these people honor me with their lips on Sunday, but their hearts are far from me. Oof. And if you love Jesus, you'll obey his commands. That's scary if you words. love Jesus, you will go where he tells you to go. You will do what he tells you to do. You will say what he tells you to say. And you know what? When I prayed about yes. it, when I saw Kirk Franklin on the BET Awards, I felt the righteous indignation of God come up against me. Kirk Franklin, your time is up. Oof. Your time is up. So I think he just walked out right now, Kirk Franklin. He had enough. He's hearing it. The bodyguards are like, you want us to do something? Kirk was like, hold on, let me come out. So I think he came out. So now he's talking directly to Kirk Franklin. Jesus Christ has numbered your days. Your days have been numbered, Kirk. Your days have been numbered. I'm speaking straight to you. Your days have been numbered. Your days of not even reading your Bible. Going and getting up for filthy lucre's sake. All you do is cash a paycheck at the BET Awards. How dare you go and be friendly with the world? Don't you read your Bible? James 4.4, 4, you adulterers and adulteresses. Don't you realize that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Who, th therefore, whoever is a, hate, a, a lover of the world is a hater of God. You sat there rubbing shoulders straight. You rub shoulders straight with the world. You didn't stand up at the BET Awards and say... Hey guys, Jesus is coming back soon, and the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the blood will be up to the horse's bridle because the blood of the sinners, and no one's warning people. The Bible says your prophets were false because they did not warn you of the sin that leads you to calamity. Now, you didn't believe that I said Jesus is Lord at the BT Awards? That's not enough, sir. The Bible says if you, if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if you don't warn them, their blood is on your hands. And you got a lot of people at the BT Awards that have, you got a lot of blood on your hands, sir. You got a lot of blood on your hands. That's what I'm here to tell you. And how do you, you got a lot of blood on your hands? Mike Nasser, you think that this is the right way to share with me? That I'm not doing what you believe is Jesus? You, you, you're not listening to churches. The Bible says wisdom know. cries aloud in the open streets. Mm. How do you know I'm not listening to preachers? How do you know that I'm not The preachers are drunk with the wine of Babylon. Haven't you read to the book of Revelation? They're drunk with the wine. So you're saying that every preacher I talk to is drunk with wine. Well, if, they, if, you, if the preachers that you talk to were not drunk with wine, you know what they would tell you? What would they tell when you? When you go to the BET Awards, rebuke, rebuke, reprove, and correct. All scripture is useful. And I'm supposed to do that at an award show. Oh, yes. The Bible says if you don't drink, then their blood is on your hand. And, and in, three saying, minutes, in, you, in three minutes. If you three minutes, if I had three minutes, minutes in front of the world, I would tell them that wrath is coming, they better repent. That's what I would tell them. Okay, so. Because what you did is just say to them, keep on singing the lullaby, everybody. See you later. Go to hell. That's what it was. Maybe That's you what didn't it was. Watch the same show. Maybe you didn't watch no, the same no, show. No, I watched it. You know, I want to let you know that you with your nice little Michael Jackson moves. Sir, sir, you need to repent. Those moves will send people to hell, sir. My dance moves will send people to hell. Not your dance moves. 
but because you're not doing the right thing with your lips. You are in love with your lips, but your heart is far from you, sir. Okay, but you wait. The dance moves are are definitely going to send some people to hell, too. Have y'all seen this? I know you see the Kirk Franklin dance moves. <laughs> yeah. Let me show yeah. this real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> the dance moves are going to get some people in trouble. I'm just trying to say. Yeah. Look, um, just an observation. He's got um, two bodyguards, one security guard, two police officers. I don't know who Kirk Franklin thinks he is, but I think one bodyguard would be sufficient. I don't think Kirk Franklin has enemies that want to do physical harm to him like that to where he would be. You know, you, you, you're moving around like like Trump. Like, I... I think one bodyguard would do it. You probably would save a lot of money, too, if you just had one bodyguard on payroll. Like, I don't think you need all those people. You ain't got no enemies like that. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue. Jesus, you would hate what is evil. Love must be sincere, hating what is evil and clinging to what is good. Well, I tell you what. You know how many kids are being shot up in the streets because of what's at the BET Awards and what's being promoted there? They're being shot because of the BET Awards? No, because of the people that are being promoted at the BET Awards. People are being shot in the street because... Yeah, you see these people talking about, I took nine bullets and I did this, and look at how cool I am, I got all the honeys and I got all... That's that? what's creating all the greed in the why streets. Why don't you and I do this? Why don't you and I do this? When the concert is over, why don't you and I sit down and open up the word of God and break bread? Sure. I can't, I, I, I won't break bread, I'm saying, I'm saying, no, no, repent, no. sir. Well, no, no, I'm saying this, but, I, but I can talk to you, I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah, let's open up the word of God together, and let's break the word, like the word says, iron sharpens iron, and okay. let's open up the text. Okay. Okay? Well, I can, I can agree with that, but, I, but I'm not going to shake your hand, sir. Second John, know your Bible. Second John, people, the Bible says whoever doesn't preach the same gospel, do not even wish them God to eat. Otherwise, I'm a in your evil deeds, sir. What you did at the BET Awards was nothing but a sham before God. Not I think it's you. I don't know if you peep the people in the background, especially the cop in the background. He, I don't know why he got that smirk on his face. What is this? I don't. I wish I could zoom in on this cop. You see that smirk on his face? That is the most evil, demonic smirk I have probably ever seen in at least 15, 20 years. You know, like, what is he smirking like that for? I don't, okay, let's continue. Let's not get off track here. I'm talking to you, but I can't agree with you, sir. Because when I agree with you, I'm saying you are in Christ, and I don't believe that. Shaking my hand is agreeing. Shaking my hand. Yeah, the Bible says don't even wish them to have speed. Okay. I'm just obeying scripture, sir. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No, 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 no. no. Well, well, coming to the concert, yeah, and then I'm going to hell. Well, guess what? You wouldn't let me come up into the concert and say, hey, Kirk, how you doing? I want to talk to you about something, man, you know? Yes, I'm, what, the, what, what, what am no, I doing right yeah, now? Trust me, man. I've, I've been to many right places now. with many many high-ups. They don't, they don't Have you ever met me? Have you ever met me? I met you now. Okay. And I'm telling so you what the Bible says. Right. Well, after the concert, okay. let's sit down and open uh -huh. up the word of God. Uh -huh. Okay. We'll do it. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Still got The Bible says that friendship with the world is hatred towards God. we got to be the kind of people that are ready to speak up against evil. Here we are speaking about homosexuality, that it's a good thing. Okay, this is... Wow. Okay, my initial thought, before we get into the next video, I'm going to show you the video where they all sit down. Homosexuality! Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. Homosexuality! Let me show you his name in the description. Homosexuality! Homosexuality! I don't know his name. Okay, I'm going to show you the video where the street preacher... Homosexuals! Kirk Franklin... And Tony Evans, so if you can see the phone right here, I guess Tony Evans is on the phone right here, I'm and they're sitting backstage. I'm going to show you that video, but my initial thought was that it did sound kind of harsh. But then right after I had that initial thought, so at the same time, it's like I do feel... Homosexuals. Homia, don't play. That it is loving at the same time. Homosexuals. I don't know, I just got the sense of like, it, it, it is loving at the same time. And I don't know how else you're really supposed to get the attention of Kirk Franklin. Um, Fucking homeless. Because obviously he's had some opportunities. And I'm not saying that everything he has done has, he's completely dropped the ball. Uh, there's been times where he's, no, I can't remember those times. But there's been times where he's, you know, talked about the gospel and preached the gospel and stuff like that. 
But there's been a lot of times where people feel like, myself included, that, yeah, he dropped the ball, that he's been fellowshipping with the world and stuff like that, you know? Um, so how much are you really supposed to get his attention? I understand that the Bible says, hey, you should have these conversations in private. But actually, you know, and I guess that's because what people say that, more. hey, if you feel like um, you need to rebuke somebody, then do it in private. And the Bible is. even says that. Oh. But the Bible is actually very specific. It says if oh. your brother sin, this is Matthew 18, verse 15. It says oh. if your brother sins against you, you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. It's very, that's, that's very different. If, the, if, if your brother sins against you specifically, you personally, then, okay, keep it private between you and your brother. Don't, you know, let the entire world know. Don't post about it on social media. You know, don't make this a, well, a public situation if it happened it. privately. If All this stuff my brother you know, between did to you me. and your brother, then have it out between you and your brother. But media. then the Bible says, if he doesn't listen to you, then bring in you know, maybe one or two other people, ideally believers that know both of you, that can kind of help you, you know, relay that message. If your brother, if your brother is not willing to repent and doesn't listen to you, then bring in a couple people. If your brother is still not willing to listen to you, not, not, you know, doesn't want to repent, doesn't want to, you know, pay you any attention, then go to the church and bring him to the church. And then still, if your brother doesn't want to listen to you, okay, look, then there's nothing else you can do. I know this is kind of harsh, but the Bible says... Put him on social media, unbelievable. dog his ass and out, and on. let the whole fucking world know move fuck on. he did. Don't invite him to your you know, small group. Don't fellowship with him. Just move on and let him come back at his own time, hopefully. But don't make this a huge, big thing. Keep it in-house. Sinners and when beginners. Even going to the church and going to the two Sinners other people... And winners. You're keeping it in house. You're keeping winner. the circle small. You're not blasting it out to the entire world. Blasphemy! Now I know this is a very different situation. Blasphemy! Because this is not like a situation where Kirk Franklin like sins specifically against this Greek preacher personally. So I do think it does warrant an open rebuke. But just remember something. Um the purpose of the rebuke is not the rebuke. Rebuke! The purpose of a rebuke is to bring that person to a deeper understanding of their shortcomings, of their faults. <laughs> to make them aware of the shortcomings. what they may be doing that may not be pleasing to God so that they can repent and turn to God. The purpose of the rebuke is Peace not out, to I'm gone. confrontation. I'm gone. The purpose, the purpose of the rebuke is to turn that person back to God. So I'm whenever gone. possible, if we can have Flat a man rebuke, jetty. 